Hi you guys, do welcome back. Today is November 29th, 2021. Yesterday is my birthday, now I'm 30, so obviously I can't hear. My eyes hurt, my knees hurt, I have phlebitis, I don't know. But hey, happy birthday to me, and to celebrate the market said, F you. Well, welcome back, we're gonna be talking about the technical analysis. Now, technical analysis for my channel consists of supports, resistances, trend lines, patterns, e main lines, Volume profile, RSI, stochastic, and the vortex indicator. You're going to notice on your screen now is a template I use now so you can see what each line means. Pause the video if you have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's what the lines are going to mean on the chart. With that being said, volume profile is a very strong tool. I have a huge video on it. Please go check that out as well. I don't have time to describe volume profile for you right now, but you can watch this video right here for volume profile. Learn all about it and how it's a great, great tool for you. Use that with traditional volume. You're going to be 10 times better of a trader after using it than before. I can almost guarantee that for you as well. If you enjoy my content, the Discord will be good to go 12 2 December 2nd. Don't join now. You're going to get charged um, at the end of the month. Like all the folks who join get charged then. Don't join now and get charged. Um, wait till 12 2 and then you can have the whole month to check us out. In the description box is that uh, link as well for the Discord, the community, the five newsletters at night, the five newsletters in the morning, all that kind of good stuff. Lastly, in the description box is my journal. All the calls that I make here with you are on that journal as well. Go check that out. I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, my course is still available for you. Bada boom, 25 free lessons there, 25 on the Discord as well. Go check that out. It's all there for you. It's not a shill. With that being said, eight picks. The good thing with the market sell-off for someone like me, I get a lot more opportunity to pluck some very delicious stock fruit. With that being said, let's get into it. So first is AGNC. Again, when it comes to my charting, go back to that photo and I can describe what we see here. You can see that uh, in that photo. A very easy support play. Nothing, you know, nothing too crazy going on here when it comes to convergence, but we can see that this is a very strong support spot historically, but also all these green dots. What's this mean? AGNC, I did the research, I like this pick a lot. It's a 5P ratio, which is fantastic, but two, it's a very good REIT, real estate, you know, investment, whatever it is. I don't care about acronyms. It's real estate that pays for not only real estate. And you can see every single month, it gives you 12 cents. It's only $15, it's almost one cent, or sorry, 1% every single month at this price. Man, if you were to get down to the 12s, the 13s, I mean, you were to have another sell-off down here, an absolute steal, just a bit lower. So I love what I see for the long-term hold here. Even if you swing it for a month or two, you may only make 4 5%. But the goal here for me is a more long-term idea. I just love this stock so much when it comes to what we have potentially. It's a fantastic value for such a great REIT, in my opinion. Great dividend stock. Let's check the indicators. What's so cool about this channel is I actually don't scan with or use indicators when it comes to charting. It's 100% off of what I use for technical analysis that I described before. Indicators show you four things we call it MTVV, like the channel, MTVV. Momentum, trend, volume, and volatility. That's all it shows you. These four things help you enter a stock, exit a stock, find value, find oversold, find overbought, all those kinds of great things. But you'll always find on this channel and when you get better at technical analysis that the TA is the cake. These indicators are just the icing. So let's take our time together. Go through these. You'll see live what a veteran who does this sees. And if you are new, it'll help you get some clarity. Let's check it out together. So AGNC, first thing I'm seeing is the 10 EMA is blue. 50 is uh, purple. Red is 200. Clearly the 50 is the strongest. See how it bounces off it like clockwork? That's your strongest crossover. Down here, it's 1% away. It's almost one third of our profit. We're going for a pretty healthy swing. I see no point in waiting for that. A 10 melt up, a 10 cross is really good to show uh, confirmation of a short term swing. And of course, over the 200 is the best thing though. With this kind of stock, we are buying into value with the hopes of a long term hold because of the dividends. So I don't really care much about email lines. Down here though, being 250 10 price, which is improperly stacked, but it's properly stacked and it has its best runs. So down here, it's a great value. The email lines at least show us we have a great value. RSI, again, you want it probably closer to 34. It's at 42, and that's fine. It's showing some life, but anywhere down here, it still spends 95% of its time north of where we are here. It's a fine value. Again, RSI, fine value. Stochastic, fine value. Bulls are low, bears are high. Again, with Vortex, you can buy in when the 
green line is low, like that area, or you can buy it when the red's high. Or what you can also do is you can buy when it crosses over, like right there, right there. All these crossovers are really good for runs, but again, because AGNC to me is a great value purchase, it's showing value technically and showing value in the indicators. I think it makes a whole lot of sense, especially given the dividends it has. It's been printing for years. I love what I see. AGNC, I'd watch this dude. Next is DCP. This is important to note off the bat. One hit, two hit, and now three hits. If we zoom out, we can see the trend line, all right, is a bit longer, okay? I know it's here, but for the short term we're looking at, it only has two confirmed hits. Any one of you idiots, any one of me idiots, can draw any trend line from point A to point B. That's not impressive, right? Anyone can do this, they can do this. But A to B to C to D to E, three, four, five hits, that's much more consistent. So again, take that in consideration while we're looking at this one. So DCP has a smaller trend line here. Again, long term, that's definitely here, but in this time frame, it's only two hits. Great support here. The POC is gravitational, but also the strongest support and resistance on this chart that's holding us up with this trend line. Great convergence spot with support, trend, and POC all together. I love what I see. Lastly, before I turn on the email lines, what I'm going to look for, because I have a trend line going up, as we can see, the trend line's going up. See this? We also have a very strong support line, which is right here. See, this is a very strong support area, the POC and the support line. The 200 EMA line, which is red. We're gonna see if it's pointing sideways or up. This is critical because if it's pointing upward, we're gonna go off the trend line. If it's going horizontally, we're putting more emphasis into the horizontal support line. This tells you where value truly is and what the trend, which could be horizontal or upwards, is really leaning towards. Let's check it out together. So we can see that the EMA line of the 200 is doing what here? It's going sideways. Now again, there's different ways to think about this. You come over here and come all the way over and see that it's going up just a little bit there. But overall, let's see clearly right now it's going sideways. Overall long period, okay, it's going upward. But at this current moment, the 200 is doing what? It's gone up 0.5% in over, in over a month here. We're putting more emphasis into the support play. Less into the trend, which is important, but because the 200 is going sideways. See that? Sideways. Right there. Going sideways. We're putting emphasis in the support play, which could be here. Could be the POC. It could easily be also towards 2535 here. A 10 cross is fine. It does good. It does good. It's a pretty good 10 cross. But the 50 is the best. But again, am I waiting for a cross down here? No, I'm not. You wait for a 10 cross, but overall... I'm just going up that support play. And again, you can wait for a cross, but not my kind of cup of tea for a value purchase. I think it's a value purchase because RSI is low. Stochastic is almost a negative 40, which dictates it being a value. And the bulls are on top. Bears are low. If the bulls do dip here, we're going to have a great purchase, great value. But you can ride momentum either way here. DCP, I don't love that the Vortex has green on top. I got to be honest, I don't love that. But again, if it comes from a value purchase, the 10 cross is there if that continues. Or if the green cross is beneath that red for the vortex, you can buy it lower towards 26 bucks or so. But DCP, a great value purchase, great support trend line. I love what I see. I watch this dude. I called EQX last week, and I can spend too much time here, but it's forming a very nice channel up. I had about 20 stocks I like today. I went off risk versus reward to choose my favorites. You know, if it dips down two or three more percent, you can just get out at three percent. All right, it gets it loses this support area. You could probably buy back in towards the volume profile line and be just fine. Right? If you lose this double bottom that's forming here, you lose this, you can get out. And again, you have a really nice little trend line here. Right? If you lose this area, the 720s, the 710s, you can just get out. But a full move, all the way up, is almost 20 percent. Right here, if we get another one of these moves up, it's eight to one odds. Right? Obvious earnings overreaction earnings overreaction earnings overreacted both ways is an earnings or overreaction right down to where you want it small cap here love what i see great support line we can zoom out here great support area it balances plenty here go back even farther we can see its whole entire first period together was right here very strong spot i love what i see great higher lows great higher highs it's fantastic let's check the indicators together is it hit the run button you idiot 10 crosses are great. They're pretty good. You cross the 10, you're at least breaking even if you have over 25,000, no BDT rule. You're breaking even 9 out of 10 times. 
Crossing the 50 is better. Over the 200 is obviously the best. But again, waiting for a 10 cross here makes a lot of sense. You give up 2% to get that confirmation if the candle holds. Key is if the candle holds. A lot of folks see it cross the 10. And they buy in that it wicks back down. Make sure whatever time frame you're on, that candle holds above the 10. Then you know you've confirmed a trend reversal just on the 10 day, which is, you know, it's something. So I think waiting for a 10 here makes a lot of sense. R size of 25, love it. Obvious bullish divergence is forming here. These are all lower lows. This is a higher low right there. You see it's reversing already another higher low. Obvious bullish divergence in negative 55, that's value. Bears cannot get much higher. Bulls cannot get much lower. EQX is a massive sell-off right to where you want it, technically speaking. Of course, do your DD. And I can tell you what to buy off of everything. I can't do fundamentals for everybody here. But when it comes to just technicals, EQX is an entire snack. I watch those, it, love what I see. Next is GNRC. Generic Holdings. Let's zoom out again. I'll have to zoom out sometimes. Look at this. It uh, used to be 30, now it's 424. It's up almost 1,000% in the last decade. It just prints. And again, this is a great lesson for you. If you think you're always late, you're never going to be early. So again, you got to eventually buy into something. And here we have that. GNRC has a great value and a great risk first reward. Again, if it breaks down 3% at most, I'm getting out. You can easily go towards 391, maybe even as low as 383. Anywhere down here, you rebuy into. And again, a full move here to get a higher high, which it has, it takes months sometimes, is 23%. A bad move to these old highs over here is about 9%. It's a three to one odds. And again, if you do get lucky, which has great history, if you do get lucky and takes off on you, you're good to go. It has a history of making little channel ups, right, little channel ups here. It has a great history of consolidating together here. I love what I see with GNRC. Great history right here. Let's check the indicators together. I gotta sneeze real quick, bless me. Hold on, here it comes. Gunzun type. We can see the 10 cross is the best thing I've seen all day so far with crosses. Look at that run up. Perfectly holds. It gets a little, a little weighted here, but that's okay. Look at this. It crosses. You're good to run. So 10 cross here makes a lot of sense. And of course, you cross all three, you're good to go. I wait for a 10 cross. That's fine. A 200 is fine here. You choose your favorite, you know, your favorite line. You cross over it, go along, you're good to go. RSI, it's fair. Stochastic, it's fair. Vortex, it's fair. It's showing obvious consolidation. It's been going sideways for a very long period of time here. Almost four months, it's not really changed. It's gearing up for a big move one way or the other. Sure, it may be down, it may be up. No one knows the future, but GNRC deserves to be watch list. I love what I see, uh, for sure. Put on a watch list, that's a huge, huge play. Next is NMTR. A penny stock. I love that GNRC is $425 and NMTR is $1.05. A very simple support play. MUX was also on my list today, MUX. Very similar. I didn't add it because it didn't have as many hits on this time frame, if I'm being honest with you. And again, it has a more, it has a longer history of surviving here and the support's been tested many more times than MUX has. But MUX is also fine too. NMTR does have some vibes of a descending triangle as we can see. It does have higher lows, which I don't love. But again, it's so riddled with higher highs as well throughout this. I'm not putting too much emphasis into that. A very strong support play. Again, if it breaks down 5%, you can just get out. But a full move here is almost a 6 to 1 play. Yes, it may take a month. It may take weeks. But NMTR here is a great support play for a penny stock. I'm not looking to hold it long term because, again, the earnings, it may take money from you. I don't love that. But overall, it's a really good looking play. Let's check the indicators. I'm sure a 10 cross is fine. I'm sure a 50 cross is fine. But with the kind of consolidating play, I'm not overly concerned with the EMA lines at all. I'm not having a look at them. It doesn't really seem to bother me at all. I'm sure the 200 cross is fine, but so far away, who cares about it here? RSI is fair. Stock is fair. Vortex is fair. It's consolidating. This is also going sideways. It's just to have a history of consolidating. It's showing that again. If we do get some more selling off to better value, like four or five cents lower, great. But NMTR is not going to get much lower than this. And if it does, you can just get out. I'd watch this. I love what I see. Next is REG, Reg, Regency Corpse Center, whatever. Let's zoom out. It has a history of being in this area. And again, it does go higher, right? But this is a very pivotal spot on the history of the stock. It's been a resistance for a very long time. It's now above it, I think, as a support. That's a good sign of this being a pivotal spot that's still holding here. 
But again, it doesn't have much previous history being higher than $78. Um, so that's okay at best. But again, it's a low risk play. Sure, I don't I would not buy it above <laughs> above 70. So the number number below that <laughs> is a fine spot to buy into. But I think this is a great conversion spot. Trends going up, supports here. Let it come down to us. So if tomorrow's a green day, NMTR, EQX, DCP makes sense. If tomorrow's a red day, I'm watching REG right now. Let's check the indicators. Ooh, that 200 bounce is absolutely riveting, my dear Watson. That's another level of support there. See how this bounce up the 200, like, religiously? Let's clear the drawing set real quick. Look at that. Bounce, 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 bounce. Right, that's beautiful. So long as we bounce here and hold, we're good to go. 10 crosses are fine. You also are close to that. You can play off the 200 bounce or the 10 cross. Both work fine if you rely heavily on EMA lines. Uh, Stochastic looks good. Vortex looks good. RSI looks good. No real clear divergence. Sure, I mean, you have one possibly forming here if it holds. But, I mean, I'm not overly sold, but, you know, 30 RSI, low stock, low vortex, high bears. I like what I see. I think REG is sold off beautifully from its earnings call right to where you want it to be. Sure, I don't love historically how it's had higher highs, but way more lower lows. It could definitely get lower, so be careful and use a stop loss for sure. But REG, I watch this. I love what I see. Next is S, Sentinel-1. That's definitely like a Matrix movie. We can see it's a new IPO, 10-year. It's not, It's a new IPO, right? It's a very consistent trend line. super de duper -de consistent. It's like GRVI with a very consistent support, which I also might have called, but S is the new IPO I wanted to call today. This is a really good support area, really good trend line. POC is gravitational. And again, we're still risking 5%. It's more, it's more volatile. But look at the reversal time. One hit, two hit. One hit, two hit. We're taking our time here and forming a support. It takes time to form supports. And when it gets going, it doesn't look bad. It takes off. Yeah, I do want it a bit lower. Give me $3 off. It'd be perfect. And again, you could easily make 15 20%. Great trend up. I don't see a perfect resistance trend line. Make this a channel. Those kind of match up. But again, I'm not overly convinced by that here. But it looks like a really good trend up and a great support play. Let's check the indicators together. <coughs> Pardon me while I burst into flames. We have a great RSI. That's overbought. It's about a cross. And a 10 cross is right here. You wait for that 10 cross, I would definitely do that. It crosses the 10. Glorious, glorious runs. 50 and 200 work fine, but down here, a 10 cross is great. RSI, it's though. Yeah, the stock cast is kind of concerning. It's so high. It may pull back here, and again, you could buy in the value. But if you do come down a bit and then cross, we're good to go. And if that vortex does cross and hold, we're off to the races. As has everything you want behind it. You have a value purchase if it fails here, which is just a better deal. If you love it at 58, you love it at 55. If it does cross that 10, and that vortex cross does go ahead and keep going, well, now we're going to be in the way to buy the momentum and use that 10 area as our stop loss. S, I'd watch this dip. I love what I see. Last and not least is SYF. I've called SYF multiple times. It does very well. It's important to note for this play, if I take the trend line off, which is a viable idea here, take this off, this is a great support spot at 45.80. It bounces religiously here, or if it does dip, it's coming to $44. This trend line is held beautifully. We played off it here and made almost 10%. We played off it here and made money as well. It does well with trend lines, but again, if this does break down, if we don't see any life here, I want to buy into 46 bucks or so. Very simple support play, very simple trend line play. I love what I see. It could be forming a nice horizontal triangle here. We'll see what the next swing high does. But right here, that big old gap I want to see filled. Because again, every gap on this time frame gets filled eventually. You love to see that for sure. Let's check the indicators together. <coughs> Pardon me, allergies. 200 cross is the best. Obviously, you cross the 200. It's a fantastic support spot. And again, 10 is really good too. 10 is not, you know, nothing right home about it. It's not the greatest of all time. And again, it's too far away. I wouldn't wait for a 10 cross or a 50 cross here or a 200 cross here. But if it does, in fact, muddle around down here for a few more days, then 10 cross would become viable. When it comes to RSI, 35 is good. I see an obvious bullish divergence forming. Obvious bullish divergence there. That's an absolute snack. And negative, you know, zero is fine. You want a negative 40, that's okay. And then bulls are on top right here, which means we got to buy the momentum most likely. I think if the vortex stays green, 
and the stock has it doesn't dip any farther you have to wait for a crossover somewhere i don't like that idea i like to see this kind of fall off just a bit more give me a dollar off and if so syf would be absolutely perfect just a bit lower so if tomorrow's a red day i'm watching reg and syf if it's a green day all the other ones would be absolute snacks and of course last week's picks as well there you guys have it i appreciate you guys sticking up the whole entire episode it means a lot to me have a good rest of you guys' week. We'll see you guys tomorrow for another watch list. I appreciate y'all being here. Have a good one. Thanks once again.